Well, the ongoing saga between the Guam YTK Corporation and the Port Authority of Guam continued today at an oversight hearing where port officials continue to state familiar arguments on why the original lease agreement between the port and Guam YTK is invalid, nullifying the $14 million arbitration panel award to the Guam YTK Corporation. But as Guam YTK officials pointed out in their testimony, this whole issue could have been avoided. Here's more. Senator Frank Uggen Jr., chair of the Oversight for the Port Authority, held an oversight hearing today, and it was yet another opportunity for the Port Authority of Guam to plead its case against payment of a $14 million award to the Guam YTK Corporation over a broken lease agreement. Port General Manager Joanne Brown spent most of the hearing providing a timeline of the issue. But Brown says the issue at the heart of the saga can be boiled down to a fundamental question. Our view is very fundamental, and it comes down to the passing of law. And that's why at the end of the day, while the contract included an arbitration clause, the Supreme Court of Guam ruled that we had to arbitrate. The big question is, is can you have public officials enter into a contract that does not fall in or is not concurrent with the laws of Guam, attach an arbitration clause, and the arbitration clause is what sets precedence on this whole issue. That's what's really being discussed. Public Law 2628, which is authored by Senator Felix Camacho and passed by the legislature, says that the Port Authority of Guam must seek legislative approval for any lease agreements extending past five years. This, of course, gives the legislature the power to approve or disapprove long-term contracts, such as the Guam YTK lease, or as illustrated by Brown at today's oversight hearing, a lease agreement between the port and the company Cementon, which was approved by the legislature, unlike the Guam YTK so the port contends. But Port Authority attorney Mike Phillips and Brown say that an arbitration clause as found in the original lease between Guam YTK and the port not only erodes the legislature's power, but creates what Phillips calls a supremacy clause, which he says allows private companies who enter into contracts with government agencies that, for example, have sovereign immunity to circumvent that law. Phillips even suggested that former port board members who are now private citizens recognize this legal loophole and use it against government agencies. Some an arbitration clause that's found to be valid uh, would allow anybody, citizens, attorneys, judges, to, to circumvent the law or, quite frankly, um, previous uh, PAG board members or, or, uh, or those uh, that are working with PAG in the private sector to circumvent uh, a mandate from the Guam legislature. But in Guam YTK's testimony, Eduardo Champ Calvo points out that during the arbitration process, former Port GM and current Senator Mary Torres testified that she raised concerns initially about the port's potential liability under the original lease agreement. Both Senator Torres and a former port employee testified at the arbitration hearing that they had doubts about the illegal advice that the port was receiving when the board, under then-chair Dan Tidinko, was going to terminate the lease. Torres also testified that she was told to stay out of the matter and allow the legal counsel to handle the agreement. Meanwhile, Guam YTK reiterated their stance that the port is continuing litigation to avoid the inevitable payment of the $14 million award. And just today, Judge Anita Sakola issued her opinion on a court case yesterday granting a stay for the Port Authority of Guam on a writ of execution that was filed by Guam YTK Corporation. You can read more on our website at pacificnewscenter.com.